Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I've got two questions I'm going to answer for you. Number one, is the MacBook Pro 16 inch worth it? And if so, which is the right configuration for me? Let's jump right in. So let's get this out of the box. Now, I do have to admit, I was very, very excited when this showed up. And I'm going to kind of reproduce some of that excitement, I guess. So, as you can tell, I did a poor job of repacking it. I couldn't wait for the unboxing. And I actually already unboxed it. So we have the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Then inside, we have our documents. We have our charging brick, which is a 96 watt charging brick. And of course our cable. And the cable's here. It's pretty decent length. Of course, for those people who care, we open it up and we have gray, space gray stickers. All right, so there's a few things that are important to me. Number one was the keyboard. And we'll get into this in detail in a little bit. Uh, the other one was the ability to have 64 gigs of RAM. And another real big one was the eight gig video card and to be honest the 16 inch screen is a bonus wasn't that big a deal for me to upgrade it might be a big deal for you but for me it wasn't the thing that made me want to do it okay let's talk about this and we're just going to kind of break it down and then i'm also going to do some tests and then i'm going to give you buying recommendations of you know which configuration should you get on the budget you're on and there are some things in there that are just a total waste of money, and, and we'll get to all of that. All right, so first of all, looking at it, the form factor, you know, it looks very much like the previous model. You know, if you look at it, you can see here's the 2019 16-inch. Here's the 2018 15-inch. Now, one of the things that's kind of nice is I pulled it out of the box. I noticed immediately it's a little bit heavier. And a little bit thicker and you know what i'm okay with that i don't mind at all because i would rather have a little bit more space so we can have a better battery we can have better cooling and all those kind of things so if we just start with the size though and we look at it compared to the uh previous model you can see if i put that on top you can see it's a little bit bigger you can see there's the size of the previous one and also if we look at the height you can see the height is also a little bit different so the ports are the same. We've got four Thunderbolt 3 ports, which are also USB-C, if you look on the sides there, two on each side, and a headphone jack. So the in and out haven't changed, and we'll talk about all of this in depth in a sec. So when I look at the size, though, one of the things that's interesting is if I go back to the one that I did like before Apple completely redesigned it to the 2015 MacBook Pro, if you look at the size of the new one, the 16-inch, compared to... It's almost identical. So if I look at the height, it's about the same as what it was. And then if I look at the footprint, the footprint is almost identical. Here we go. Look at this. The 2015, 2019. Look at that. Almost identical in dimensions. Now, one of the things I do notice is if I pick them up, there's definitely a little bit more weight in the 2015. So this tells me something really important. And if you have a look at the video I did on the 2016 MacBook Pro, I mean, I absolutely roasted it and it deserved to be roasted. In fact, I disliked it so much, I returned it. And a lot of that reason was because Apple was putting aesthetics above performance. So in this case, it seems like Apple was listening in the sense that they're actually willing to make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit heavier and give us the things that we've been wanting for a long time. So the first one that we've talked about is the keyboard. So when we pop this open, and we compare it to the MacBook Pro before. We've got these horrible butterfly keys. Although this is the third edition, the 2016, they were really bad. They were super tacky and you would click on them like this weird little clicking noise, like those little children's toys. Then it got a little bit better when it went into the 2017 model. It was a slight improvement. And then the 2018, the butterfly two, was definitely a huge improvement where I could actually type. I still didn't really enjoy it, but I could actually type on. However, when I go to the new one, it's got that one inch of travel, it's back to the scissor mechanism, and it feels so good. It feels like a real keyboard again. 
Um, not quite the same as the 2015. If you look at the 2015 one here, the keys are a little bit smaller, a um, little bit more travel, and a little bit more spongy. But honestly, like this acoustics and everything on here, it's nice and quiet. It feels good. I have absolutely no issues with the keyboard anymore. I can definitely say that. Another thing worth noting on the keys that a lot of people haven't really bought up, but one of the things that drove me nuts about here on the 2016 through 2018 model. So I just call these the Mark I and I'll just call this the Mark II from now on. Um, these keys were exceptionally large and there's no space in between. So that means if you're a messy typist like I am, I would make a lot of mistakes and kind of hit the wrong key a lot by accident. Whereas this one here, there's a little bit more space between each key. It might be a small thing, but it makes a huge difference when you're typing. Another thing that's big is if we look at the arrow keys, Look on here, we had the large, on the Mark One. we had the large arrow keys for left and right, tiny arrow keys for up and down. Nobody liked that. They're back to the inverted T, where the arrow keys are all the same size, much better for navigating, bouncing around, it makes more sense. Really big, we've got the touch bar on the top, still there, but an actual physical escape key. So that means when it freezes up, you can actually get out of there, you can force it to do things. And I know a lot of people had issues with the escape key. And then on the other side, there's a physical button here for the fingerprint ID, and it also is the on-off switch. That's not actually new. I know some people have said it's new, but there's actually a physical one on the Mark One. It just seems, it just didn't seem that way. It's just very kind of invisible. All right, keyboard, much better. Uh, touch bar, you know, pretty much unchanged apart from the uh, said physical escape key. Um, the trackpad is still this massive trackpad. Um, but it's okay, they fixed the palm rejection in about the 2017, so we're not really getting problems with that. When it first came out in the 2016, um, your palm would kind of get on there, palm rejection wasn't working very well, and sometimes you would accidentally, while you were typing, it would select a chunk of text and then move it while you were typing. So that's not really an issue, hasn't been an issue for a while now. Okay, when I look at the screen itself, um, the 16 inch screen is nice. It's nice, it's big, it has lots of real estate. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel like it's that much bigger. You know, it's not like suddenly you're looking at it and there's this huge screen. Yes, it's definitely noticeably larger than the 15 inch, but when I'm running Photoshop or Premiere Pro, I notice, you know, the bezel on the sides is much thinner. So it feels like the application is going across and taking up the full size of the screen which is nice. One of the things I don't like about the screen is it's still this weird aspect ratio. It's a 161, I believe, whereas the rest of the world is working in 16 nines. So if you look at HD or you look at Ultra HD 4K, you'll notice that those are in 16 nine aspect ratio as well, as are all your TVs and pretty much all other devices, monitors, everything are, except for this. Now, it doesn't really matter. What it does is it gives you a little bit of space above and beneath, which is okay when you're working in your applications and things like that. Um, of course, when you're watching movies, you're gonna get those bars in there, unless you go full screen, then you're cutting off the sides. Um, but, you know, we're not really, let's be honest, we're not buying a MacBook Pro to watch movies. Yes, that's a benefit, and apparently the six speaker system is really good, haven't heard it yet. We will in a second. But um, yeah, for things like doing screen recordings, you have to use a third party application in order to get that 16, nine aspect ratio. So for people that are doing teaching, presentation, screen recordings, that can be a little bit of a pain, although we have been kind of dealing with that for many years now. All right, and let's just talk about the ports because we have to. So on board, there's four Thunderbolt 3 slash USB-C ports. This was a big deal in 2016. I, mean, I think it was a little bit premature for Apple to be dropping support of USB type A. But in this day and age, now that USB-C has been around for you know five or six years now, it's not really an issue anymore. Um, I actually wouldn't want to give up a Thunderbolt 3 port. So Thunderbolt 3 is the actual port type that is in here. Uh, the Thunderbolt 3s are twice as fast as the Thunderbolt 2s, has very, very fast bandwidth, and they can support three different things. They can support data transfer, they can support charging, and then they can also support video. So that means these same ports, I can use power, I can run external monitors, I can run four 4K monitors out of this, or I can run two 6K monitors out of this external. 
um, plus peripherals, and of course they can daisy chain. So those four ports enable us to pretty much do everything. So I'm actually okay not sacrificing these for a USB Type A because you know a lot of the peripherals I have now are not on USB A anymore. Um, because most of the devices I have now are USB-C or Thunderbolt 3. You know, things like the Wacom tablet now uses that, charging things for the phone, um, pretty much everything except for the charging cable for the iPhone. Uh, except for the charging cable for the iPhone 11 Pro. So as far as the slightly bigger chassis, this allows some additions of things. Cooling. And battery number one is a bigger battery it's a hundred watt hour which is the legal maximum that you can take on an airplane so if it gone any bigger you couldn't take it on a plane this makes it legal to take it on a plane now it's a, a lipo battery which is lithium polymer same as what you use in your drones and pretty much every laptop uses so as far as battery performance in life um, I'll tell you what I've discovered so far, but I'm definitely going to give you updates into the notes underneath. So check out that in the descriptions and comments. Um, but for now, when I set this up, I got three and a half hours out of it. Now, when I say three and a half hours, this is a hard three and a half hours. Um, so I literally pulled this out of the box and I set it up. I installed all the Adobe software, the Microsoft software, all the utilities. So it was constantly downloading gigabyte upon gigabyte and installing applications. So, you know, the fans were going hard, the CPU, everything was working hard on here. And typical use probably would not be working that hard all the time unless you were rendering video. But under normal working conditions, I could see you could definitely get more battery life. Um, as far as our performance things, I, I will be comparing it to the 2018 fully loaded. This is the 2019 fully loaded. Let's talk about the specs. As far as the specs on this one, I maxed out everything except for the SSD. For one terabyte SSD, it didn't make sense to me to spend the extra $2,000 to go up to eight terabytes of SSD. And I wouldn't recommend that for you unless you really need that space on board. Um, you can plug in drives, you can plug in, you know, RAIDs and different arrays that will give you just as good a performance. And in some cases, even better performance than you can get from the internal drives. Unless you need one machine with all of this stuff on you, you know, then I would recommend not going any larger than the one terabyte. But the other thing's definitely worth maxing out. I got the eight core i9 processors. I got 64 gigs of RAM. And now here's the thing about RAM too, is it doesn't per se make the computer run faster, but what it does is it allows you to do things like multitasking, um, having multiple programs open. Say for example, I'm working in Premiere Pro and I need to go into After Effects, I need to go into Photoshop, maybe I need to go to Audition, come back, I can run all of those without losing all the performance. Uh, the other thing is it works really well on really large file sizes. So sometimes I'm working on really, really huge uh, billboard sized um, PSD documents. Also works really well with the um, RAM previews and After Effects. And also for things like virtual machines. So if you're running Windows on here at the same time, that extra RAM is going to enable you to run all of that at the same time without slowing down your machine. So it's not so much that RAM makes it work faster. What happens is a lack of RAM will make it work slower. And then one of the things that really is important, and I would always spend your budget on this when you can, is the video memory. So I went for the bigger video card, which is the 8 gigs of a GDDR6. Um, um, definitely worth it's like $100 or something. It's just That's just a no-brainer. Uh, so the three main reasons for me to get this, number one was the keyboard. Number two was the better video card. Number three was more onboard RAM. Then secondary to that is the faster CPUs and of course the beautiful screen and you know and everything else was just kind of like afterthoughts to me. Those, you've, you've got to determine what it is that you want. So if you have one, it's like, should I upgrade? Should I buy one of these? Well, why? Why do you want it? What do you need? So the other thing I've been talking about here is the onboard stuff, the speakers and the microphone. So, you know, they're claiming it's studio quality microphone. So there's a three mic array built into here. I gotta be honest, I've always been really impressed with the quality of the mics in the MacBook Pros. Um, you know, I've used them in a jam where I've had to record tutorials or whatever from my hotel room and they've always worked well. So I'm actually excited to try it out and see how the new mics are. Okay, so here I am speaking. Um, you're used to hearing my voice on the professional mic. This is a Sennheiser uh, G3. And this is what I sound like on there. And also it's what I sound like on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And also what I sound like on the previous model, the 15 inch MacBook Pro. 
So you can hear the audio and I'll just play that through and let you guys decide what you think about the quality of the microphones. Also the speakers, you know, they say these speakers are amazing. So why don't I just put a movie on and see what these speakers sound like? Okay, that is eerie in a good way. <laughs> So yeah, um, it's not something you can see on this video, but the sound is incredible. Um, I'm turning it on, it's got the six speakers. I figured, you know, sound like six speakers, but it literally sounds like you're listening to surround sound. You can hear the sound all the way around you. It's, it's amazing. Um, just, I went to watch like one second that movie. I wanted to just keep watching it. Um, okay, that is impressive. So why don't we jump in and do some tests now and see if this lives up to my expectations. Now. All right, it's time to do a comparison between the 2019 16 inch and the previous model 2018. Uh, both of these are spec'd out except for the SSD, everything else, the CPU, the RAM, and the uh, video are all maxed out to top of the line. And so this other one here, the 2018 is no slouch. It's a i9 uh, six core with 12 threads. Of course, the new one is eight core with 16 threads. Let's jump in and do some real world tests with these. So for the first test, we're going to use Photoshop. Let's start with a large document. It's over 12,000 pixels wide. It's got five layers on it. And we open it pretty instantly on both of these. So the first test we're going to do is we're going to quadruple the size of it. So we're going to resize it to 1200 DPI. And then to make it more interesting is we are actually going to use the AI algorithm and we're gonna turn the noise reduction up to 100. The 2018 MacBook Pro comes in at one minute and 21.82 seconds. The 2019 comes in at one minute, 11.8 seconds. So that's about 10 seconds faster. And now this document is 50,000 pixels by 11,420 pixels. And we're gonna save it. It's a 4.32 gigabyte file when it's saved. The 2018 MacBook Pro saves this in 34.36 seconds. The 2019 is 36.32 seconds. Now let's add a blur to this. Now it's too big to do a radial blur. So the most difficult blur that I can see is the shape blur. So we're gonna apply a shape blur with this tree and we're gonna do 10 pixels. The 2018 MacBook Pro comes in at 1 minute and 10 seconds. The 2019 MacBook Pro comes in at 48 seconds. So that's significantly faster. Let's jump in and see what we can do with After Effects really quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some drone footage and I'm going to apply Warp Stabilizer on it. It's just a 7.5 second clip. So the 2018 MacBook Pro, it takes it almost two minutes. It's one minute and 59.36 seconds. And then a 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro comes in at one minute and 14.88 seconds. So that's around about 45 seconds faster. So why don't we have a look in Premiere Pro and look at some tests we would do there. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this video with the number of clips on it and we're gonna encode it out at highest quality. The 2018 takes one minute and 12 seconds. The 2019 16 inch takes one minute, 12 seconds faster. What we're gonna do is this time is we're gonna take in some 4K footage. It's one minute and 40 seconds. Now it plays back as smooth as anything on both of them, which is pretty amazing considering it's DJI 4K, which is very difficult to decode. So the 2018 MacBook Pro does this in one minute and 13 seconds. The 16 inch 2019 MacBook Pro tears through this in 33 seconds. So that's more than half. So what we're gonna do is to spice things up a little bit. I changed the speed to 50%. So that's gonna drop that clip down. Now at one minute 40 clip is gonna be three minutes and 20 seconds and encoding that into HD from 4K to HD, so it has to resize it. The 2018 MacBook Pro comes in at two minutes and 25 seconds. Still very impressive. 
but the 2019 16 inch comes in at one minute and three seconds. So I can see that the heavier stuff I throw at it, the better it performs. So I can see that this is definitely going to be good for my video work. And there's a couple of benchmarks we have here. I ran a cine bench on both of these and it came to 3151 for the 2019 and the 2018 was 2293. On Nova bench, it was 2348 on the 19, the 2018 was 1914. One of the other things though is thermal throttling. If you remember the 2018, when this one first came out, there was thermal gate, they called it, and people were putting them in refrigerators and all kinds of things. They did kind of alleviate a lot of that with a software fix, but one of the things is it just didn't breathe it so well, um, just jamming so much into such a small compartment, it just, the ventilation really wasn't as good. With the 2019, what they've done is they've actually created larger heat sinks, larger fans, um, and larger openings. So the ventilation is a lot better, which means that it doesn't have to throttle it down so much um, when it's working, because what it needs to do is throttle it down so it doesn't get so hot and it doesn't melt it and <laughs> melt you um, and catch on fire and all kinds of crazy things like that. So it has to slow down the performance if there's not enough cooling. So in this case here, I don't really see any major um, thermal throttling and I've done some research and from what I can see there's no issues with it. When it gets some heavy lifting I can definitely hear those fans going and also putting it on my knee, you know, when I'm wearing long pants it's okay, I can feel it's pretty warm. I probably wouldn't want to be wearing this with shorts uh, when it starts to go pretty hot because the temperature can really get pretty warm on it and um, having multiple images and also when I'm doing things like retouching and painting inside of Photoshop, I think this is definitely um, all you need. In fact, for a lot of people, I could say that this is a viable desktop replacement. This is the MacBook Pro that we've been looking for since 2015. 2016, they dropped uh, a mess and I created a video on it. Um, and you can see I was definitely not kind on that. Um, and that video got quite a bit of attention. But, you know, the thing is, I'm not paid by Apple. I'm not sponsored, they didn't give me this, I bought it, I paid full price, bought it with my own money, I can say whatever I want. And so if this wasn't good, if it was a turd, I would say it was a turd, but it's not. It's, um, I'm very happy with it. This is the MacBook Pro I've been looking for since 2015, which means I don't have to keep upgrading every year because I think I can actually hang on to this. So, and you can see the computers I have, I thought I was going to be hanging on to this one for a while. <laughs> Now I'm going to go in here and I'm putting my Photoshop Cafe sticker on it. Is that a seal of approval? Who knows? But from now on, you'll see this with this slightly crooked sticker on it. Um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely recommend this. Um, in fact, you may not even need the Mac Pro. A lot of people might not. Knowing me, I'll probably end up having to get it. But um, I'm super happy with this. I'll be getting rid of my other laptops and just focusing on this. I'm very happy with it. And I think I will be for quite a while. Now, let's talk about buying, though, because I did pay a little bit of money to get the maxed out ones. And let me talk about that. When you go on the Apple side, you can see there's options that you can get. Okay, so they start at $2,400 for the base model with the six cores. Um, if you have a little bit of money, I would not recommend getting that one. I think you're better to spend the extra $400 and move up to the 8-core one. And the reason for that is for that money, you're getting um, more CPU for your money, but also you're going from the 512 to the one terabyte SSD. The 512 is going to be a little bit tight if you've got your programs and you are keeping some files on there. One terabyte seems to be a manageable size, at least for me. Um, so I would definitely spend that $400 if you could and get that one. Let's look at a couple of the other things. So if you do that, that's going to bring you in at $2,800. And this is like just for the minimum that you really want to go to. Um, I would definitely spend $100 for the 8 gig video card. That would take it to $2,899. Um, there's no reason why you wouldn't spend that $100 for that. Um, just totally makes sense. And then, of course, if you have a little bit more budget and you want to buy some of the RAM, you know, I would take it up to 32. It's going to be an extra $400 if you take it up to 32 gigs. Um, 
but then that's going to get you in at about $32.99. So the base is $2,400. For $32.99, you can get the base, but what you're getting is a one terabyte. You're getting an i9 with eight cores. You're getting extra RAM up to 32, which is, which is enough for most people. And of course, you're getting that eight gig video card. You know, if you want to max it out, it's going to cost you $38.99 before tax and Apple Care. Now, you can spend an extra $2,000 and max out that SSD if you want. And that's going to take you to about six grand. But unless you really need to have that on your computer, you really, really need that eight terabytes on the computer and no, you can't have external drives for some reason, um, maybe some travel restrictions or something like that. Um, Unless I had a really compelling reason, I wouldn't spend the money on that. I would save that $2,000 and just buy some external drives. And external SSD drives are definitely coming down in price. You can even buy RAIDs, um, which are even faster. You can buy SSD RAIDs that are even faster than the internal drives. And they're just more expandable, and you can switch out those drives. I tend to stay away from maxing out the solid state on the Apple devices because... I think they overcharge for the solid state drives and they also kind of overcharge for the RAM. Now in this situation, you can't upgrade any of this. So if all you can afford is the 16 gigs of RAM, then you know go for it. But if you can spare the budget and bring it up to 32, or in my case, I even took it up to 64, um, that's gonna make this machine last a little bit longer into the future because these things are going to last a while, um, and most people, when they get these, are going to be hanging on to them for a few years. So you want to think about that, too. You know, is the 16 gigs of RAM might be okay for now. You might be scraping by. If it's the bare minimum right now, in another year or two, you're going to find yourself in a situation where maybe you have to buy a new machine because it's just not keeping up with your needs. So you've got to really think about that and think about your needs. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for watching this, and I hope I've given you some useful buying advice. Um, I've tried to keep it as realistic as I possibly can. You know, I'm not hyping it up or trying to be an Apple fanboy or an Apple hater or anything like that. Just keeping it very realistic with what we have in front of us. And, um, you know, and what I recommend is, you know, have a look at what your needs are and what your budget is. And if you've been um, holding out for a while now for a good MacBook Pro, uh, because you'd heard bad things about the uh, 2016 through 18 models. Now's the time to take the plunge. This is great. Um, I have no reservations about recommending this. This is a great MacBook Pro. I think I'm just going to forget 2016 to 18 ever happened because that was just dismal <laughs> years in, uh, in with Apple as far as I'm concerned with the MacBook Pros. But now they've been listening to people and they've got it right. So anyway, guys, I'd love to know what you think about this. Um, let me know in the comments underneath. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And also, if you like the occasional tech video and you also like tutorials on Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, subscribe to Photoshop Cafe and you'll get a new video from me every single week. Make sure you ring the notification bell so you know when I upload, which is usually every Tuesday. And for those who've been watching, you know what I'm going to say next. If you like it, smash the like button into dust. Be part of that smashing squad or something. No, that's I'm not going to make that a thing. Don't worry. And it's late, and I've got to edit this video <laughs> and upload it before tomorrow morning so you guys can all watch this. So thanks for hanging in there with me, and uh, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.